So this is the pilot scale industrial inject tool. So if you look to the left hand side here, we have a sled system. So this sled would carry the substrate that you're trying to print on uh, from the left hand side to the right hand side. What you see here, this is a roller system. Uh, we, for printing on a flat substrate, we don't use this, but um, for this particular platform, we can also easily switch out this LED system with uh, what we call two elevated system, where you, know, you can load powder into the first chamber and then the powder is being raised up and then being pushed and spread using this roller and then onto the second uh, chamber. So the second chamber would, what would be what we call build play. So we can use this as a different alternative method of printing uh, to create 3D objects from powder. Here we have three stations. This is a print station. We can mount up to three industrial print heads. So the print heads, what it does is to deposit materials onto the substrate that is being carried from the left-hand side to right-hand side by the sled system. And then we have uh, right now um, the Matrix SG1024 MA heads, so which has like 1024 nozzles. And then uh, we also have a recirculation reservoir for each of these heads, so that you know for materials that tend to you know contain particles that settle, then we, re we can recycle the ink to keep it suspended, the particles, so that it it's not gonna clog the nozzle or agglomerate. And then um, also, if you look here, uh, we have um, a meniscus control, so that would help us you know, maintain the negative pressure when we're not printing, so that the ink doesn't come out from the nozzle. So if you look right here, you know, we have a UV lamp, a very compact UV lamp that we uh, position here, so that when the material gets deposited, then it would get right under this UV lamp, and then we can solidify the liquid that we put down. Again, we can do up to three materials, and we can do each layer you know, uh, with the UV lamp uh, processing. And then right next to the UV lamp, we have the IR. Um, so IR, this IR is very powerful. It generates a lot of heat so that we can, you know, um, um, do high temperature processing of the um, ink that we put down, or, you know, we can also drive off some of the solvent. At the very end of our SLED system, we also um, have a bar that we can mount a camera on. So basically the camera is gonna capture the images that we just printed, the ink after the UV and RL processing and how do they look. And then potentially we can use it for, you know, um, uh, inline process control so that we can, you know, when we go, the substrate goes back, then we can print it in a different manner to compensate for any print error that we have. So currently on this tool, we have three industrial print heads. So those print heads are piezoelectric print heads, meaning that you know, the firing of the ink depends on the waveform that we send to the um, print head. So here is showing a typical waveform that we use. On the Y axis here, we have the voltage, and then the X axis essentially is the time. So you can control how hard you're pushing the ink by adjusting the voltage, the maximum voltage that you apply. You can also adjust how fast you want to ramp up to that voltage, how fast you want to ramp down. So we can, you know, by you know, tuning the voltage, the pulse, what we call the pulse width, how long you apply the voltage for, you can control you know, how the ink is being ejected from the nozzles. And on the left hand side here, what we have is the control for the sled system. So we can control things like how fast the sled is moving, you know, if the sled is gonna stay at a particular station like print station or UV or the IR station for a longer period of time before we move to the next station. And then also we can, you know, adjust um, like things like, you know, the IR could turn on how many seconds before the sled goes under it, you know, the UV. Uh, and things like that. So uh, this is a pretty comprehensive interface that allows us to control the print process and so that we can optimize the process to create different objects. So here what we're looking at is a drop watcher system. In this drop watcher system, if we're given new ink to work with, we don't know how to condition um, the jetting waveform so that we can squeeze out the ink without creating a lot of fine droplets. So what we do is we take one of the print heads uh, from the uh, Husky Jet tool, we mount it onto this uh, rail here, and then after that we you know, have a camera so that it would be synchronized with the firing of the drops so that we can image, for example, here, 
you know, we have the ink coming out from a nozzle and then the ink gets elongated. You have this tail, so, um, and then this tail soon after it combines back with the main drop. So this is a very important tool when you're dealing with new inks because uh, the condition that works for one ink may not work for the other ink. So we definitely want to have this tool here together with our uh, production tool so that uh, together we can identify how to find the optimal conditions for printing. And then after that, we put the head back to that machine and then do the actual printing. So you may ask, what can you do with the Husky Jet printer? You can print uh, more two-dimensional patterns, like you know what you would print you know, traditionally, like graphics. You can put you know here Husky. You know you can put whatever patterns. And but we want to go beyond that as well. So what what do we want to print? And we have been using the Husky Jet uh, for the uh, project that we evaluate the printing of different passive circuit elements. So as part of the flexible electronics initiative. So we're looking into printing, you know, resistors, capacitors, inductors, and we're trying to figure out, you know, with this print tool that we have, how consistent the print is. Let's say if we print a thousand devices, you know, how was the variation, which comes to be very important when you try to commercialize or, you know, using the inject technology for production, for actual manufacturing. Uh, last but not least, um, you can, we can also use the inject um, tool, uh, the Husky Jet tool that we have, and to print tablets like this. So here you see there's a Yukon logo on it, and then you can have different shapes. The idea is then you can combine different types of drugs so that you can have personalized medicine applications. Uh, you can engineer your drugs uh, that would fall apart in a certain way so that you know it would have certain benefits as you, as you uh, take those uh, drug tablets. And this is kind of what you can do. So the, you know, the range of um, products that you can do using the Husky Jet tool from graphic printing to electronics to uh, drug tablets. Um, also, uh, you can use similar technology, or the same technology for things like um, green parts for ceramics, uh, metal uh, green parts, where you print this uh, like the tablets, so you, you bind it together with an organic binder, and then after that you go through a sintering process to burn off the organics, leaving behind the ceramic or metal parts for you know, high temperature applications.